Hi everybody, it's Rudy again, here to discuss uh, Baccarat Combustion Analyzer Calibration and with another bit of Baccarat Trivia. And this should be an easy one, but I didn't get it for many years uh, until my good friend uh, Jim Burke uh, told me the story. You ever wonder where the term firite came from? If you do a search on it, uh, this page comes up on Wikipedia and shows the old liquid-filled uh, firite bottle that was developed during World War II for the U.S. Navy by Herman Baccarat. Uh, Baccarat still uses the term today, and it means verifying that, you got it, the fire is right. So, part of making sure that the fire is right entail entails maintaining the uh, calibration of the CO sensor in your combustion analyzer. In this video, we're going to discuss the calibration and maintenance of the carbon monoxide sensor, primarily, um, as well as the stack temperature, things like that, um, in your test instrument. Um, and in particular, this mostly applies to the Firite Insight, the Firite Insight Plus, and the Firite Intech. Local authorities of jurisdiction require test instruments be maintained and calibrated per manufacturer's instructions, and Baccarat has several um, uh, options detailed in the operator's manuals that come with these instruments. First option, uh, you can just, uh, as, as has been traditional, uh, you can just return the instrument to Baccarat in Pittsburgh for calibration. Go to mybaccarat.com hover over the support button and click on calibration slash repair services. This will take you to a service request form. Fill the form out and click on submit at the bottom of the page. Generally within about 24 hours, you'll receive a return materials authorization number or RMA. Uh, pack the instrument up, write the RMA number on the uh, shipping label and send it to Backrack in Pittsburgh. Uh, there's also a uh, uh, calibration um, uh, facility in Canada. Uh, the second option, Baccarat has the exclusive Be Smart CO sensor program. The way this works is you sign up for the program, then depending on which program you select, you will receive a calibrated CO sensor in the mail. Um, that calibrated CO sensor has a 10-digit code uh, right on the side of the, uh, pa the, the package that the sensor comes in. Uh, you go to the calibration screen, we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, enter, in that, uh, enter in that number, and you're good to go. You recycle the sensor you replaced in the, uh, in the postage paid envelope and mail it back to uh, Baccarat. Third option, um, there are also several private calibration service centers available across the country. If you do a search for Baccarat calibration and verification tools, you may be even able to find, maybe even able to find one uh, close by in your area. The fourth option, and my preference, is simply to purchase a tank of calibration gas and a regulator so you can just do it yourself. Um, by my way of thinking, uh, doing it yourself is probably the most convenient way, and certainly if you've got a couple of instruments, the most economical way. I would estimate that I probably get 50, 60 calibrations out of a 103 liter tank of calibration gas. Uh, the other advantage of having the calibration kit on hand is if, if for any reason you, have, uh, you suspect that the uh, readings on your instrument are in error, it's really easy to slap some gas on it and know for sure. If you're interested in doing it yourself, I'm going to demonstrate two ways of introducing the cow gas uh, to the instrument that I'm familiar with. Uh, we will cover this first and then go at, into actually how to perform the calibration. One common technique uses a manual regulator and a flow meter. Uh, I call it a positive pressure. Um, other people call it the excess flow method of calibration. Uh, you simply attach the hose to the regulator and go to a T fitting. One leg of the T goes to the um, uh, flow meter. The other leg goes to the instrument. You turn the knob clockwise until it starts gas flowing as seen by the flow meter. Uh, my own preference is to use what's called a demand regulator, which acts much, much like a, a scuba tank regulator. It delivers the amount of gas that the pump is actually pulling. It's very simple. Once you screw the regulator onto the tank, you run a hose from the barb fitting uh, to the intake port on the analyzer, and you're ready to go. The advantage to the demand regulator is that, to me, it more closely simulates actual operating conditions as the pump in the instrument pulls a negative pressure inside the tubing to extract a sample of flue gases from the equipment. For example, one issue might be if the pump isn't pulling properly. It will probably won't even open the valve in that demand regulator, and consequently you won't see any changes in the readings. 
If the positive pressure or excess flow calibration is used, pressure from the tank will likely force gas through the instrument and it will appear as though the pump is operating properly. Another advantage with the demand regulator is you will use a lot less calibration gas as 100% of the gas is used to calibrate the sensor. The positive pressure calibration delivers a portion of the gas um, to a flow meter which is then just exhausted into the room. Um, this is a very, very subjective estimation, but I would guess uh, that I probably get twice as many calibrations, at least twice as many calibrations out of a tank of gas using the demand flow regulator meter. Um, plus, using dem the demand regulator is just a whole lot easier. Um, I also use calibration gas, and think about this, uh, that's made up of 100 ppm carbon monoxide in nitrogen. Uh, a lot of the calibration tanks that I see come with a, uh, you know, like a 500 ppm uh, with the background in air, for example. Um, having it in nitrogen allows me not only to calibrate the CO sensor, but the nitrogen verifies the O2 sensor is working okay, and the flow path, the hose and probe assembly, don't have any leaks. In theory, the oxygen reading should be probably within about 0.5, 0.6% of zero. Uh, but if there's a leak in the hose, for example, or if there's a bad O-ring in the moisture trap, the O2 reading will not even come close to that. All it takes is a small leak, um, and you probably won't even uh, approach uh, 2 or 3% oxygen. I use 100 ppm gas as we are adjusting the accuracy of the span, and I would prefer the CO sensor reading be more accurate at the lower levels. Uh, plus, I'd rather be blowing 100 ppm CO in my face instead of 500 or 1,000. Um, I obviously do this in a well-ventilated space. Um, and if you have a commercial industrial combustion analyzer like the PCA, um, it's a little more difficult, but it's still manageable. Um, check with the operator's manual for the required types of gases. Uh, the CO sensors in the uh, PCAs are hydrogen compensated. Um, they require one tank of 500 ppm CO and an additional tank of 1,000 ppm CO and 1,000 ppm hydrogen. But the calibration procedure is pretty much the same. It's no big deal. Um, you start by turning on the instrument. You do not need to have the hose attached, um, and you will get a thermocouple error message as the thermocouple is not plugged in. Once the instrument is warmed up, go to the calibration screen. It will ask for a password. The default password is, ready for this, 1111. <laughs> and if you want to change that, uh, you can do that through the uh, FireRight user software. Uh, you can select whatever um, password uh, uh, you, you prefer. Um, you scroll down to ca CO calibration um, and press the round enter button on the keypad. Um, it will say in the display, measured and applied in the screen. The measured reading is what the instrument thinks it's seeing. The applied number is what we know it should be seeing, and it should match up with the ppm content of the gas cylinder. It will default to 500. If you have 100 ppm or 250 or some other level of gas in the cylinder, you will absolutely need to change this applied reading to match the content in the tank, or the analyzer will not accurately uh, read carbon monoxide levels. To change the applied reading, press the scroll right button so it highlights the number you want to change. For example, let's say the 5 and 500. Then press the scroll up or down button to change the reading to match the level on the label in the gas cylinder. I'll put, calib uh, put the calibration rig together by simply screwing the regulator, and this is the demand regulator, um, onto the tank of gas. Then just run a piece of tubing from the barb fitting on the regulator to the intake port on the bottom of the instrument. If you use some silicone tubing, it will more easily stretch over the intake port and be a good seal. With the pump running, you should see the measured reading start to rise. When the reading stabilizes, generally in about three minutes or so, press the round enter button on the keypad. The message good calibration should appear and the instrument's calibrated. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. The procedure to calibrate the stack thermometer is very similar. 
This is a K-type thermocouple simulator. You can see the thermocouple simulator right now is set for 32 degrees. We'll also be using 212 degrees Fahrenheit as a uh, second reference point. We'll take the hose and probe assembly and plug in just the stack thermometer plug into the left-hand side where it says stack. We'll now scroll down the uh, calibration menu and select T stack. The applied reading in the display will default to 32 degrees. Uh, if you look at it though, how the instrument seems to think it's seeing 28 degrees next to where it says measured. Just press the round green enter button on the keypad. The display reads good calibration entry saved and moves on to the next calibration reference. The default here is 572 degrees. We want to use 212 degrees, so we change the applied reading to 212. The instrument thinks it's seeing 208 degrees. Press the enter button, the display says good calibration, entry saved, and you're all done. Keep in mind all you need to do is simulate 32 and 212 degrees. You could also do this real simply by having a container filled with ice water to produce 32 degrees and a pan on the stove with boiling water to provide uh, 212 degrees. Do be careful to only plug in the thermocouple, not the hose. <laughs> I haven't actually done this yet. Uh, but I'm guessing pumping boiling water or ice water through the analyzer would turn out badly. Do remember that you will need to review the complete information in Bacarex uh, operator's manuals that come with the instruments um, or are available at mybacarex.com. So that's our quick review on calibration. I hope this has been helpful. We're planning on adding additional uh, videos here in the near future. Uh, press the subscribe button to get notifications. And again, thanks for your time.